Welcome back. Um, so we're about a month out from the start of the season. We're, what, a little over a week away from the start of training camp, although there's a lot of players out skating. We've had a lot of rookies in and all that. And so, really, you know, we're up to that exciting part of the year, and this is where predictions start to come in. So I let you guys predict the standings. So when I did the season previews, I let you guys do it. And it went pretty smoothly. I thought it went smoothly, and I, I enjoyed, you know, seeing the, the results, the polls on that. So I'm debating about how to do the, the previews next year and just leave it where you guys, you have the vote. Maybe put the vote up a little bit sooner, delay the previews a little bit later, that kind of thing, and, and really get a robust response to all the voting. So uh, in, in discussing last year's standings in relation to what's expected of this year, these things are definitely tied together. Now, I've got the predictions from The Athletic. I've got the predictions from Sports Forecaster. I would say I'm probably a week away from having the predictions from the hockey news, and we can take a look at the, the predictions at that point. It's a tough one, though, because in the East, it looks like you've got eight teams above the line, eight teams below the line. And because of this, the huge separation between the two, it, it doesn't feel like, well, we're going to see any kind of movement, right? So you've got Florida, 122 points. They've been in the playoffs for three straight seasons. That's what these numbers are for. This is the number of seasons a team's been in the playoffs down here. These are the number of seasons in a row a team has missed the playoffs. That's the difference in color. So three years in a row for Florida, 122 points this past year. And I expect them to fall back at least a little bit this year, not because I think they overachieved or anything, but because they won the President's Trophy, they lost in round two, they won a Stanley Cup. I think they take their foot off the gas the same as Colorado did late in the season this past year. Uh, Toronto, 115 points. They've been in the playoffs six straight years. We know the whole story. The They don't win in the Game 7s. There was the Game 5 against Columbus as well. If it's a winner, you go home. Uh, Toronto's been packing their bags, and, and this is definitely a big year for them. Six years in a row, while I, I know there are fans that say, well, it's kind of picking on Toronto to talk about that, but Tampa Bay's been in the playoffs for five straight seasons, Colorado for five straight seasons as well. So really, you know, this is this is a situation where Toronto's had more straight playoff appearances than the, the last two Stanley Cup champs. Uh, the Boston Bruins have been in the playoffs six straight years. So this is a division where things have been kind of set, right? Uh, Tampa Bay 110 points this past year, Boston with 107. Uh, it seems like everybody's picking Boston to fall back. I agree. I think that, that for Boston, this could be a tough year. Uh, below the playoff line, you have Buffalo at 75 points. It's been 11 straight seasons. That's a new record of missing the playoffs. For Detroit, 74 points, six straight seasons of missing the playoffs. For Ottawa, 73 points, five straight seasons of missing the playoffs, but they're the sexy pick as the team that's going to make that, that next step this year. And for Montreal, 55 points. They missed the playoffs a year after making it to the playoffs and making a nice little run out of it too. So for, for Montreal, uh, they're definitely in rebuild mode. There's no expectation for them this season. Carolina, 116 points. Their fourth straight year in the playoffs, which seems... Like it's a minor thing. However, ask Hartford fans. Uh, it was rare that Hartford was in the playoffs four straight years. And for Carolina, it's unheard of. So they're going for five in a row. No reason they won't get there. And I I think there's a good chance that they end up leading the division again. But they'll be fighting it out with the Rangers, who were six points behind them this past year. It was the first year back in the playoffs for the Rangers after their retool. Pittsburgh Penguins, 16 straight seasons in the playoffs. That's a long time. 103 points. They have been the sexy pick to drop out of the playoffs for many publications. Neither the Athletic nor Sports Forecaster are saying Pittsburgh drop out of the playoffs. I'm not going to say it either. Spoiler alert. Uh, the Washington Capitals, 100 points this past year. It was their eighth straight season in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And then below the playoff line, you have the New York Islanders, 84 points. The first year they've been below the playoff line in a bit. Uh, for Columbus, 81 points, their second straight year outside the playoffs. For New Jersey, 63 points, their fourth straight year outside the playoffs. Philadelphia, 61 points, their second straight year outside the playoffs. So, how does the Athletic think this is going to work? They have Ottawa in the playoffs and Boston out. It was a staff vote. 38.6% uh, felt Ottawa was going to be above the line. 36.4% voted for Boston. So, there's a good, set, good a really close vote there. But they do vote Ottawa to be in the playoffs and Boston to be out. The sports forecaster, a little bit more gutsy in their predictions. Ottawa and Columbus they have making the playoffs. They have Boston and Florida being out. 
yeah, I, I don't think Florida's going to miss the playoffs, but I, I do admire uh, the the ability to, you know, try to try to go for something that's really wild in your predictions. Because if you end up being right, you're pretty happy. Now, we get out to the West. Uh, Colorado, 119 points. Their fifth straight year in the playoffs and coming off of a Stanley Cup win. For Minnesota, 113 points. They've been in the playoffs three straight years. Uh, Dallas, 98 points, getting back into the playoffs after a very disappointing 2020-2021 season, which followed their Stanley Cup final appearance in 2020. Nashville, 97 points, their eighth straight season in the playoffs. Do they make it nine? Depends on who you ask. So below the playoff line, you have Winnipeg, who fell out for the first time in a bit with uh, 89 points. For Chicago, 68 points, and they're in a rebuild. That's their second straight year outside the playoffs. Arizona, 57 points, their second straight year out of the playoffs. Would have been more than that, but they did knock out uh, Arizona or Nashville in a, a play-in round, and that play-in round existed because they expanded the playoffs to 24 teams that year, which has definitely changed the picture of how many years a team has made the playoffs and how long a drought is for a team as well. Calgary. Calgary got back into the playoffs after a year outside the playoffs with 111 points. So that's remarkable, but Calgary's shown in the past they can be wildly unpredictable from one year to the next. The Oilers, 104 points, their third straight year in the playoffs. It feels like the Oilers are building up. I will agree with articles asking, are they contenders that then answer in the affirmative? I do think the Edmonton Oilers are maybe the best chance for a Canadian team to win a Stanley Cup this coming year. No offense to Toronto, but the Oilers have shown uh, in reaching the Final Four this past spring that they're not that far off. And then you have the LA Kings with 99 points getting into the playoffs for the first time in a while. So 99 points, not too shabby. Can they get better? They can. Do they? We'll see. Uh, then below the playoff line, you have Vegas, 94 points. First time they've missed the playoffs in their history. You have Vancouver, 92 points, their second straight year missing the playoffs. San Jose, 77 points, their third straight year missing the playoffs. Anaheim, 76 points in a rebuild, their fourth straight year. And Seattle with 60 points. They have not been in the playoffs. They have to be better than that 60 points. So coming back over here and getting into the athletic side of things, Athletic has Vegas getting into the playoffs and Dallas out of the playoffs. So they're kind of just making a tiny switch here. Vegas only finished four points behind Dallas. So they're saying that Nashville will be better than Dallas. Vegas will pass Dallas. That's pretty conservative. Uh, on the sports forecaster side, definitely ballsy here. They have Vancouver and Vegas above the line. St. Louis and Nashville as the teams that are going to be out. So again, just the, the difference in predictions. And as wild as that sounds, you've only got four teams getting in and four teams being out for the sports forecaster. And as crazy as that sounds, well, the Rangers got in when they hadn't been in in a while. Dallas, LA, Calgary. We had four teams make the playoffs this past year, 2022, who did not make the playoffs in 2021. And that's kind of standard. And you're always going to have teams that have a surprising season. Calgary, first place. Very few saw that coming. LA being above the playoff line, it felt like they were ahead of schedule. Uh, Dallas wasn't a huge surprise. They had the bounce back. And the Rangers wasn't a surprise. A huge surprise to me uh, that they would, they would end up in the playoffs. But they played much better than I thought they would. So I'll go over here and I'll use the green marker here to, to try to predict where I think teams will finish. Uh, so... I don't think Florida wins the division again because they're they're going to be a little more conservative. I don't think we're going to see Florida just, you know, okay, crazy, crazy, come on, let's go, you know, five goals in the third period. I think we're going to see a team that's not so concerned with the President's Trophy, not so concerned about the standings. I get the feeling that, you know, Tampa Bay is overdue uh, to end up finishing first. I'm going to have Tampa Bay as a first place team. And I say that because... I think Tampa Bay is going to have a pretty good regular season. I think they're going to be trying to prove, hey, we can win another Stanley Cup. Yeah, let's go ahead and win the division while we're at it. Florida, I don't think falls far. I think Florida ends up being second in the division. So I would say Florida is second place in the division, which would put Toronto as third place in the division. Now, I think there's going to be a separation between third and fourth. And I think that that Boston falling off, it is something that both the Athletic and Sports Forecaster are predicting. I'm leaning towards that as well. I do think that the Boston Bruins could fall off. Now, Ottawa, is Ottawa the team that's going to get in? Is Ottawa going to get in? I do think Ottawa can finish fourth in the division. I think that Detroit could finish fifth, and I would say Boston could finish as low as sixth. 
it's there's two things here. One, Boston's an older team at this stage. There's a lot of older players they're relying on, and one of the older teams is probably going to fall off in the East. Uh, and and just that. For me, anyways, I, I don't look at Boston's lineup. There's there's nothing really with Boston's lineup that I think would scare other teams in their division or in the East. Which means that 7th place, I do think Buffalo would be 7th, but I think Buffalo will be better. One thing that I think is going to change is, you look at these pretty anemic point totals for teams below the playoff line and these ridiculous point totals for teams above. I think the teams above, I think their points totals will drop a bit because I think teams below the playoff line are going to get better. It's just that's how that works. Uh, which means that I'm I'm definitely thinking Montreal finishes eighth. I don't think they move out of last place. And I don't think they want to. I think if they if they get the number one pick and they get Bedard, I think there'll be some happy dancing for Montreal fans. So that's how I think it ends there. We'll get into the playoffs in a second. Uh, in the in the Metro, I'm going to go ahead and say the Rangers finish first with Shesterkin and Net. I'm going to say Carolina finishes second. So we'll say there's just a switch there in who's first place in the division and who's second. I think it probably comes down to the wire again. Third place, I don't bet against Pittsburgh, so I'm going to put Pittsburgh third. Pittsburgh, you just, you don't. Uh, but there's there's a lot of things you can try in, in terms of sports and predictions. I, I just don't bet against Pittsburgh. 16 years in a row in the playoffs, I'll say sure. Now, fourth place in the division, I think Columbus is going to get better. I think Columbus could get remarkably better. I think Washington's going to miss Backstrom. I think that Columbus finishing fourth, Washington finishing fifth could absolutely happen. I will say that New Jersey could finish sixth because they're going to improve. The Islanders, I, I just don't see it right now. I, I look at where they were last year. I look at the team coming into this season, and, and I see a team that could finish seventh. Philadelphia, I think we can kind of all agree end up finishing eighth. So who makes the playoffs? And this is the big question, right? So in the East obviously, because that's the only one I've talked about. If you are top three, you make the playoffs. So, for anybody who skips to the end, this is going to look like a mess. Uh, but yeah, so Florida, Toronto, Tampa, Carolina, Rangers, Pittsburgh. That works, right? I will say Columbus. I will also say Washington. So, in my predictions, I have Boston out and Columbus in. So that's closer to Sports Forecaster, who also has Ottawa in ahead of Florida. I, I can't get there. I, I can't. Um, and really, in all honesty, if that's the way that turns out, I would be ecstatic to see Ottawa in the playoffs. So it's it's not a hate thing, which often happens with these videos. I, I discussed that today on Sakaris and Price. The one I make these predictions, there's always the, he, he just hates on, he hates on. I, I don't. I genuinely don't. All right, so coming out to the west here, let me go ahead and move that black line down so that I can get the number in above it. Uh, so in the West, we'll get to the Central. Um, I do think Colorado repeats as division champions. So that's one division champion that repeats. I have Tampa Bay, Rangers, Colorado. Uh, number two in the division, I think it's going to be St. Louis. I think the prediction that St. Louis is going to miss the playoffs uh, for a sports forecaster, I think that ages like milk. We'll see, but I think they finish second. I'm an optimist for Dallas right now because I think they get the uh, Robertson deal done. I think there's a lot of upward momentum there and I think they end up finishing third. I also think Minnesota with the lineup changes they've been forced to make in the offseason I think Minnesota is going to be a little bit weakened this year and so I think Minnesota ends up finishing probably fourth in the division. I think Winnipeg should get a little bit better and and I think fifth is a spot they could finish and for Nashville I would put Nashville at sixth. So Nashville's eight years in a row in the playoffs I would have ending. Uh, seventh place team Chicago, 8th place team, Arizona. So I don't have things changing at the bottom of the division. The 8th place team in all three divisions, still 8th place. I do get concerned seeing that because that's not usually what ends up happening year after year. So we get out to the West and to the Pacific, right? And I do think that the Oilers, I really like the moves they made in the offseason. I think the Oilers have enough to finish first in that division. I think Calgary, losing Goudreau, losing Kachuk, adding Huberto, adding Uyghur, good. But... Uh, they're missing Tanev to start the season, and I, I don't know that Calgary necessarily finishes first again, but they should finish second. And then this is where things get tough. One of these three teams, LA, Vegas, and Vancouver, will be third. At least I believe so. I mean, San Jose, Anaheim, and Seattle technically are in this because we haven't played a game yet. So that's the beauty of preseason predictions. Nobody's played a game yet, so it's just really kind of, we'll see. 
And so I, I think out of these three teams, I like Vancouver's odds. I, I do. And I know that may come across as always biased for Vancouver. I can't remember the last time I picked Vancouver to make the playoffs. I don't think I did last year. I don't think I picked them to make the playoffs, but um, it really, in all honesty, the cautious optimism I have is still there, and this should be the year they break through. This should be year under Bruce Boudreaux, full year, and with Demko in net, and with Miller's now locked up, if they can get Horvat locked up, there's no distractions. I, I like their odds, uh, which means I'm putting LA in fourth place because I still think with Vegas, I am I am concerned with the goaltending. And just, I, I don't know, there's something with Vegas's roster. Both Sports Forecaster and The Athletic have Vegas getting back in. I, I don't, I just don't see it. We'll see whether or not that ends up being the case. Uh, a, a good start to the season would be huge for Vegas. But I, I think LA has, has really shown that they have some upward momentum. And again, Vancouver, really what hurt them was the start of the season. And it took them too long to fire Travis Green. And I don't think their roster is worse than last year. I like their additions. Uh, so then you get into the last three. And I think San Jose probably still finishes sixth. I think Seattle finishes seventh. And I think Anaheim, who are still in the midst of a rebuild, end up finishing eighth. So then who makes the playoffs? So again, the stars slash asterisks go to the top three, which is Colorado, St. Louis, Dallas, uh, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. How much how much fun would that be if all the Western Canadian teams were relevant at the same time? I mean, seriously, that I mean that would be kind of fun to watch. So then you get into the fourth place teams. You have Minnesota and LA. I do like Minnesota's chances. And then you get into LA versus Winnipeg. I do like LA a little more than Winnipeg. So I'm having Basically, Nashville would be the only team out of the playoffs that made it last year. Vancouver would be the only team that missed the playoffs that would get in. Could Vegas be there? Yes. Could LA be there? Yes. I think it's going to be really tight. In in terms of, of where things are going to be tough, I think we'll see uh, the fight between Ottawa, Detroit, and Boston. Pretty close for a playoff spot there. And then I think that New Jersey should be close-ish to Washington. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be four or five points, but New Jersey hopefully is playing some important games in, into February at the very least. And then when you get out to the Central, I think Minnesota and Winnipeg are going to be close, as will Nashville. I think you're going to have three teams that are pretty close to one another. And then again, when you get out to this division, I think three, four, five are going to be pretty close between LA, Vegas, and Vancouver. There was only seven points between those three teams last season. It may be fewer this coming season. But that's the wonders of, of the the standings and trying to predict the standings and who's going to make it and who's not. So I'll take a picture of this board and we'll see how it goes during the season. But it should be a fun year. I'm really looking forward to this season. We finally have a league where 16 out of 32 teams make the playoffs. It's perfect. Stop talking about expanding the playoffs. It's perfect. Half the league misses the playoffs. That's honestly, it makes it feel like making the playoffs is special and it's important. And I'm old enough to remember when 16 out of 21 teams made the playoffs and not making the playoffs was considered an embarrassment. Not making the playoffs was considered uh, one of the worst things, unless you were in the Patrick division in the late 80s, in which case it was a, you missed the playoffs because you're in the Patrick. If you guys were in the Norris, you'd make it. But Hey, that's a whole conversation for another time. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Who do you think makes the playoffs? Who makes the playoffs that didn't in the East or in the West? And who misses? And again, all I'm predicting here is Boston and Nashville dropping out, Vancouver and Columbus jumping in, which is more conservative than it's likely going to end up being. Again, four teams made the playoffs this past year who missed the previous year. Odds are we're going to see some kind of crazy movement from somebody. Ottawa could be a team to watch. So if I was going to, to handicap this, I would say Ottawa's a team to watch here. Columbus, I'm picking to make the playoffs. I think they could be a team to watch. Winnipeg could end up shattering this whole thing in, in the Central. And Vegas could end up finishing anywhere from 5th to 1st. Uh, really unpredictable. It's going to depend on the health of a lot of their players and how well the goaltending holds up. Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.